Hello, welcome to another immigration art video. My name is Art Saratelli, and together with Mara Mial, the two of us, we are the lawyers at the immigration law firm of Saratelli Mial, PLLC. If you've got any kind of question about any immigration topic, send us an email, give us a call. Email is your best bet. We schedule all phone calls or Skype calls, WhatsApp, WeChat. We schedule all those calls through email. So your best bet, start with an email, tell us what's on your mind, If you've got a question, we'll have an answer. The subject of today's video is intent. What is your intent when you cross the border and come into the United States? If you tell the customs guy at the border that you're coming in temporarily to study or to visit, and then shortly thereafter do something inconsistent, inconsistent with visiting or studying, say you, say you marry an American. If you marry the American too fast, Someone might accuse you of lying at the border. Hey, hey, you told the guy you were visiting, and the next thing we know, a couple of days later, you get married in America? That's too fast. You knew at the border you were going to get married, and you told us you were coming in as a visitor. You're not visiting. You're staying permanently as a permanent resident with your, with your new American spouse. What do you think we are? Dopey? We're the United States government, and we don't know what you're thinking, but we can make up rules that tell us, by law, what we think you're thinking. What does that mean? Intent can be immigrant, meaning permanent resident. You have an intention to stay permanently, or intent can be temporary, non-immigrant intent, non-permanent resident intent. What's, what's a non-immigrant intent? You come as a visitor. What's a visitor do? You come in, you visit, you leave. You, student, student, student is another, another non-immigrant temporary intent. You come in, you study, maybe you work a little bit on optional practical training, and then you're supposed to go. as of the taping of this video, the Department of State this month issued this guidance, this, this um, <laughs> proclamation. Um, they said, look, if you come in at the border temporarily as a student, a visitor, and within the first 90 days, 90 days, you do something inconsistent with your status that you declared at the border, we're going to say, you're a liar, liar, pants on fire. Lying equals misrepresentation, misrepresentation equals fraud. And if we accuse you of lying at the border, to get into the United States and you seek a green card or permanent residency after a very short time, a month, five weeks, six weeks, we're going to say you're a liar. We're going to say you're a liar. By law, you lied. We don't know what's in your mind, but we're going to say you lied because you did something inconsistent with temporary intent by getting married too soon before the 90th day of your temporary stay here, before the 90th day you got married to an American. 
and now you're you're going to put yourself in line for permanent residency by law under this 90-day moratorium on any activity inconsistent with your temporary intent you did something inconsistent you got married therefore by law we can accuse you of lying and then you got to prove you didn't and if you can't prove you didn't then um you're going to be barred forever we're not going to let you stay in the united states with a permanent residency in fact we're going to throw you out and never let you back in All right, so that's the Department of State rule. Now, immigration's got a rule that's called the 30-60 day rule. I've always, in other videos, that's why I'm making this video, I'm updating my marriage case videos, I always would tell clients, the government has a 30 day rule. If you come in as a visitor with temporary intent, or you come in as a, a student with temporary intent and then you get married to an American within within a month 30 days uh-uh by law the government says you are a liar and then you've got to prove that you're not and if you're unable to prove you're not lying well then they uh, they the government will will throw you out accuse you of fraud and you will be barred forever. You can't come back. Lying and misrepresentation and fraud. Very bad, bad, bad. So I would always say to my clients, the 30, 60 day rule, I would not get into the details. I would just say, don't do anything inconsistent with your intention that you state at the border. We don't know what you're thinking in your head, but all we've got to go on is if you do something inconsistent within the first 30 days, like get married to an American and then seek, seek permanent residency, then uh, clearly a visitor doesn't do that. And you did that within a month, you're a liar. So I would never talk about the 30, 60 day rule, 30 day rule, 60 day rule. I'd never talk about the 60 day part of the rule because this simply says if you get married between the 30th day and we know anything before the 30th day is automatic accusation of fraud. But if you do anything between the 30th day and the 60th day, there's a presumption that mm, it looks a little weird. We'll ask you some questions, but you're not, you're not presumed to be a liar by law. We'll cut you a break. Tell us what was going through your head. And it's okay if you get married in the period between the 30th day and the 60th day, as long as you got a reason. Tell me what was going on. And the reason is based upon your observable behavior. We can't read your mind. The government cannot drill a hole in your head and see your thoughts. Thank God. All right? So, so I would never talk about the 60-day part of the 30-60-day rule. Who cares about that? It's the first month that matters. Immigration, as of the date of this video, still has the 30-60-day rule. So, will immigration adopt the 90-day rule and make it explicit? Who knows? This whole area of intent is so dumb. It's stupid. And that's a legal word. I learned that in my third year of law school. This is a legal analysis. The legal analysis of the intent rule is stupid. Here's why. Does it make, does it make any sense in the 21st century to get so hung up on what someone's intention inside their brain is when they show up at a border. In the olden days when Teddy Roosevelt was the president and it took a man or a woman on horseback to get to a pier in one of the port cities to get on a steamboat to, 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 to sail to, to Europe and it took weeks. 
then that was a big deal getting to the border. That's a big deal. Whoo! It's important. Now, getting on an airplane is like getting on a bus. It's like a bus in the sky. Any Tom, Dick, or Harry can buy an airplane ticket. Airplane tickets are too cheap. This intent rule in the 21st century is ridiculous. I can get on an airplane in Paris in the morning and be here for an early dinner. It's ridiculous. Am I, an, am I a visitor when I show up from Paris in the same day to have dinner? If I fall in love with the American waitress and I stay, well, am I, am I a visitor? Did I lie at the border if I really wanted to come here for dinner because it's completely realistic to get on a plane and come to New York for dinner from Paris? And if I fall in love with the waitress, I hang out for a little while and get married? Am I a liar? Should I be thrown out forever and barred forever because I'm a fraud? Or am I just some crazy guy in love with the waitress? The rules are dumb. That's another concept in the law, dumb. So to, to summarize the legal analysis, in my opinion, the intent rules in the 21st century are dumb, or as some others in law school would say, using another method of legal analysis, the other folks would say that the intent rules are stupid.